Okay, audience members, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so when people think of firefighters, sometimes they think of rescuing a cat from a tree, which is actually a myth. Have you ever seen a cat skeleton in the tree? But imagine yourself wearing something like this or like a winter ski suit, carrying a 50 pound backpack, entering a pitch black building that's hotter than an oven in Las Vegas in August. My name's Rick, and I'm gonna be talking to you today about the job as a firefighter. <clears throat> I'm finishing up my degree in fire technology this semester, and I'm also taking an internship class and earning my Firefighter 1 certification at the Las Vegas Fire Training Center also. Today we're gonna to touch on firefighting as a job and we're going to discuss some of the training, the daily routine, and some of the calls that the fire department deals with, <clears throat> showing you that firefighting is actually a very physical and stressful job. Now, before anyone's authorized to serve the public by riding on a fire truck or an ambulance, <clears throat> they're actually put through a rigorous academy. Now, these academies last usually more than five months long. You start each day in the morning doing physical training or some type of cardio workout. Uh, followed by a little classroom uh, lecture and testing. But since firefighting is more of a hands-on job, uh, most, of the, most of the training is completed outside in a practical environment. Uh, per the Clark County Fire Department's homepage, a uh, recruit will participate and master uh, hose operations, search and rescue, heavy power tool operations, victim extrication, hazardous material training, high-rise operations, swift water rescues, uh, emergency medical certifications, live fire operations, ventilation, salvage and recovery as well. By the end of the academy, the recruits are certified by the state and given a badge and able to work as professionals. Now once certified, it's off to station assignment. Now firefighters in the valley work at least a 24 hour shift. And they usually start by showing up early uh, to put their personal equipment on the, on the trucks, and then also inspecting the equipment to make sure everything's operational for a call. This is followed by a briefing by the outgoing team, and then you stay in a little bit longer and you get another briefing by your captain about the upcoming uh, training and, uh, and other assignments. Um, this is always followed by going out to the public, visiting local schools or local businesses, um, to, uh, to promote public education and fire safety awareness. Um, and then they go around their area and test various water supply, um, supply stations. Now following lunch, training is always conducted. And training can be on, on any numerous things. It could be emergency medical training, uh, any new equipment or any new protocols that is set down by hire. One hour of the day is always set, set aside for some type of physical training as well. And then 8 p.m. usually marks the, the personal time for the firefighter where he, he can relax or study or sleep. <clears throat> and that's still about 6 a.m. the next day. Now these daily events are always run simultaneously during the calls. Now calls are considered the heart and soul of the fire service. So let's look at Henderson Fire Department's calls for instance. Now Henderson covers 105 square miles with nearly 300,000 residents. Now, Henderson Fire Department only has nine stations with about an average of 70 firefighters and paramedics working each day. Now, per Henderson's annual response report, Henderson Fire Department responded to 26,226 calls last year, which breaks down to about 3,000 calls per station. Station 83 on Water Street, which is their busiest station, averaged about 12 calls a day. That's about one every two hours. Now factor that into the daily routine and you can see how it gets pretty hectic. Now of these 26,000 calls, about 75% of them were medical related. Um, anywhere from a stub toe, which they do get calls for, to full-blown heart attacks, uh, to vehicle accidents and drownings. Now Henderson Fire responded to only 527 fire calls, which compared to the total 26,000 um, isn't relatively a lot. But the fire calls are the most taxing and the dangerous to the firefighter. 
According to the Fire and Emergency Services and Survival Handbook, an average of 100 firefighters die each year. More than half of those die are responding to or working in actual fire call. So now that we've covered some of the training, the daily schedules, and some of the calls that fire, firefighters deal with, imagine yourself being woken up at 2 a.m. to get dressed and speed off to a scene. The family standing outside in their pajamas, and as flames bust through the windows, the mother screams that her son's still inside. It's your job to run inside with 50 pounds of tools to grab them. So firefighting is, is not just a stressful job, but a very physically demanding one at that. So if you'll excuse me, I have to go rescue a cat from a tree. <laughs> <laughs>